As this has been a different and challenging year for many of us, we all have been asked to make certain changes and make certain uh, lifestyle choices that are, are somewhat challenging and, and foreign to us. And of all of the changes and all of the things that we've been asked to do as a people and as a country, what I have found most challenging amidst this time is to wait. I've never been very good at waiting. I've never been very good at sitting by and, and listening to instructions, not knowing how things are going to end. And certainly within the past year or so, we've had to wait as we wait on medical experts to develop a vaccine to try to help fight the virus that has been uh, plaguing our world for the past year or so. We've had to wait as we socially distance from one another and stay apart from one another to help slow the spread of the virus. We've been asked to wait as we wear masks and wash our hands and take other measures to try to prevent the, the spread of this virus. We've been asked to wait time and time again. And as we're still waiting, it can oftentimes be difficult and challenging to our faith. And as we've been asked to wait, I'd like to point out that God's people throughout history have always been asked to wait for, for different reasons and for, uh, for, for reasons that um, may, may somewhat be um, challenging for, for those individuals as, as we experience our own challenges today. I think about Abraham, as Abraham was asked to wait uh, decades on the birth of his promised son Isaac. I think about uh, Noah as he was asked to wait decades as he was constructing an ark, waiting on this, this impending flood that would destroy the world. I'm mindful of the Israelites, of, of Moses and Joshua and Caleb, as they were asked to wait uh, decades as they wandered throughout the wilderness before they entered into the Promised Land. But of all of the stories and of all of the characters that we could think about, I'm also mindful of one of my favorite stories in the ministry of Jesus. This story can be found in Mark chapter 5, beginning in verse 21. And in this story, we read that Jesus is approached by a ruler of the synagogue. And this ruler of the synagogue is extremely desperate, knowing that his daughter is gravely ill. And as his daughter is gravely ill, this man seeks out Jesus. And Jesus is asked to go to his daughter in hopes of healing her. As Jesus is, has agreed to do this, and as Jesus is going with this ruler of the synagogue to see this man's daughter, there's somewhat of an interruption. And Jesus is uh, approached by this woman who has been suffering from a bleeding condition for several years, has seen likely many doctors, has, has tried many different things uh, to try to uh, leave and, and try to relieve some of the discomfort she's been experiencing. This woman, in, in secret and also in boldness, reaches out and touches Jesus' cloak, instantly feeling healed. Jesus, knowing that power had left him, and Jesus being swarmed by multitudes of people, stops. And he asks this man, Jairus, in a way, to wait. And Jesus approaches this woman. He talks with this woman. He speaks with her, and as Jesus is having this conversation with this woman who is now healed, word comes from Jairus' house, this ruler of the synagogue, that his daughter is now dead. Now, you may have heard this story before, and you may know how the story ends. You may know that Jesus, upon hearing this news, goes with Jairus anyway to his home. You've probably heard that when Jesus gets there, they, they almost laugh, they laugh at him and they mock him as Jesus says that this little girl is not dead, but she's just asleep. But Jesus goes anyway and, and he sees this girl. He, he holds her hand, and as he holds her hand, he raises her from the dead. But to back up for just a few moments, before all of that happens, Jarius hears this news that his little girl, his daughter, has died. And as, as Jarius hears this news, his world likely feels as if it's been turned upside down. It likely feels as if 
everything he had once known to be true is, is now questioned. But I want to focus on what Jesus tells Jarius in that moment. Jesus looks at him and says, don't be afraid, just believe. In other words, trust me. So Darius was asked to wait, and I can only imagine what that would be like in that moment, to want to rush back to your daughter, to want to, to rush back and to, uh, to have this one final hope that maybe she'll be okay, and now you're asked to wait. In the past year, we've had to wait. We've had to wait on a lot of different things. But in the midst of our waiting, we too need to remember to trust in the Lord. Abraham, when he was waiting on his son Isaac, was asked to wait. And as he was asked to wait, he was also expected to keep his trust in the Lord. And there were times when Abraham slipped, and there were times when Abraham tried to take matters into his own hands. But Abraham trusted in the Lord. When we look at Noah, Noah was asked to wait and in the midst of Noah's waiting, he too trusted in the Lord. Moses, Joshua, and Caleb, although others doubted God and although others doubted that he would be able to deliver and do exactly what he said he would do, they too had faith. They too trusted in the Lord. And as we, as a people, are now in a time of waiting for many different reasons, maybe they're related to this virus, maybe they're related to other different things, as we wait, it can be easy sometimes to lose trust in the Lord. But I would like to remind you of a verse that we read in the book of Isaiah. In this verse, in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31, we read, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not, wait, not faint. As we wait on the Lord, as we wait in the, in the middle of everything going on around us, let us remember the words that Jesus spoke to Darius. Don't be afraid, just believe.